praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to first of all just thank all of you that were here, that was here on Thursday in your place. I uh, appreciate your faithfulness. Amen. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Tom, for uh, covering the pulpit for me and allowing us to get away from our birthday. Amen. Amen. Turn your Bibles to the book of Romans, chapter 12. Somebody say amen. Amen. Romans, chapter 12. We'll begin our reading today, beginning in verse number 1. Romans 12, 1. Romans 12, and beginning in verse 1, we'll read to verse 2, have a word of prayer, have a special song, and then... Get into the word, amen. 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 Romans chapter 12, beginning in verse number 1. Very familiar portion of scripture. Amen. Romans chapter 12. Oh, thank you. the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and John, and Acts, and Romans is right after that. Amen. Romans chapter 12. Begin verse 1. We seek you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You may proceed. Amen. Father, we are so thankful for this opportunity, Lord, knowing, dear God, that I'm not even worthy to have understanding of your word, dear God. Lord, you know that I'm not even worthy to be behind this pulpit of wood, proclaiming uh, someone that is perfect, coming from the lips of imperfection. But Lord, we thank you, dear God, that Lord, that you've chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Yes. Father, we thank you, dear God, that you've chosen the foolishness even of preaching. Father, we're so thankful, dear God, for your goodness and your mercy. We're so thankful for your wisdom, dear God. But Father, we do pray that at this moment that you would help us, that you would fill your people with the Spirit of God, that you would help us, dear God, to truly understand what your word has to say. Lord, we see how the enemy is so busy attacking the people of God. Lord, help us, dear God, to realize that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. Lord, help us to stop trying to fight the battles, trying to fight spiritual battles in a carnal way. Lord, we pray that you would teach us today the importance of walking in the spirit, of not allowing ourselves, dear God, to become carnal. Lord, I pray for the ones that are here today, dear Lord, that, Father, maybe they are not walking in the Spirit. Maybe they are walking in the flesh. And, Father, I pray for them. For, Lord, your word tells us that the carnal man, the carnal mind, uh, cannot even be subject to the law of God. So, Lord, even now, I pray that you will speak to their hearts and allow them, dear God, to come out so that they may hear your word, dear God, and be set free. And maybe, dear God, be delivered from the mouth of the lion today. Bless us, dear God, and help us. For Lord, without you, we can do nothing. But through you, we can do all things. So help us now, dear God. Speak to our hearts. May your word come through as a mighty rushing wind. May your word come as a hammer that breaks the hardness of the rocks. And Lord, may we to come and submit and yield ourselves to you, dear God, that we may truly rebuke the devil, and demand him away. Holy Spirit, help us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. 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 Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, church. Good morning, Show up how 
be in this place. Thank you for the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 As we finish up our acronym on the cross, we don't need it today, my brother. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> I asked Pastor Tom to pull it down for me. He has very faithfully every week game. I appreciate that. We started talking about how we were crucified. Yes, sir. Amen? Amen. Because we were crucified with Christ, we have a responsibility. Not only do we have a responsibility to, to the gospel, but we have a responsibility to walk in the spirit and not after the flesh. Yes. Must say amen. Amen. We must be obedient. Amen. Last week we talked about suffering. And today, our next word is found in our text. In Romans chapter 12. Our next word is what? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Yes. Sacrifice. Beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Amen. Amen. A living sacrifice. Let me just say that we can accomplish nothing without sacrifice. As a matter of fact, we can't even have this building unless the people of God are willing to sacrifice. If you ever get in a situation where you get something without sacrificing, it's only because somebody before you sacrificed, amen? amen. Uh, you will never be able to accomplish anything without sacrifice, amen? Everything takes some kind of sacrifice, amen? Amen. Yep, amen. Now, I'll give myself an amen in a minute. You see, the thing is, keeping the lights on in this building takes sacrifice. Keeping the oil in the tanks takes sacrifice, amen? Keeping the water running requires sacrifice. Something that we have to do. Not only you, but your pastor as well, amen? That we must all sacrifice for what it is that we need to happen. What is that we need to happen? We need to keep these doors open, amen? We need to keep the lights on because it would be a terrible thing like some of you came in on Thursday and you didn't have heat. That's only because of the fact that we got it turned, we, we got the oil in there and got the heater started a little late, amen? But as you came in today, you see the toastiness of this building that we've had to open the door. That's a good problem to have, but it is a problem as we try to figure out the heating system. But at any rate, it takes sacrifice in order for us to stay warm in the winter because half of y'all ain't gonna come to church in a cold building. But we can't complain about a cold building if we're not doing something to keep the heat on.
door is already open. Who? Look at 1 John chapter 3 with me, real fast. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 16. If we could please turn the cell phones off, people of God, it's very disrespectful to have our cell phones on while the word of God is open. Amen. Uh, who you think you are? Uh, I think it's better than being in the movies. They may turn your cell phone off if you go to the movies. Amen. Y'all should never let your pastor go away. Amen. <laughs> and next year, y'all will be like, you ain't going nowhere, but you always come back different. <laughs> First John 16. Hereby was perceived the love of God. Okay, now turn it off, son. Amen. Here I receive you the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to do what? Lay down our lives for the Christ. We ought to do what? Lay down our lives for the Christ. Lay down our lives for the brother. Who is my brother? All of us. Everybody that's a child of God is my brother. Oh my God. 
You know it's fake.
Turn your Bibles to James chapter 2. James. The book of James, right out of the Hebrews. Right, amen. James chapter 2, verse number 14. James 2 and verse 14. Amen. We have to say amen. Amen. I'll start reading. What doth the prophet, my brother? Though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? Hmm. It's a pretty good question, right? This is not talking about saving faith, by the way. One guy will teach you the six levels of faith, but not today. Amen. This is talk, this is this is not talking about saving faith. Because in verse 15, it says, if a brother or sister be naked and in debt and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace. Be warmed and filled. Do you know how some people give a wave offering when the plate is passed? You don't, you don't know what a wave offering is? Is this. <laughs> you know, the plate comes by and you just kind of wave it on by. Amen. <laughs> wave it on by. That's a wave offering. Amen. Anyway, so, but you say be warmed and filled. May the church's needs be taken care of <laughs> by the grace of God. May the Lord fill the taste with oil and keep the electric on. By the grace of God, I have spoken into the universe. And then you come to church on the next Sunday, and we don't have no electricity. Because everybody in church that spoke something to the universe, that's not going to happen. Amen. Say, so, preacher, you know what I'm saying? I can't afford to give. You can't afford not to give.
Verse 17 to 1 John 3. 1 John 3, verse 17. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother hath need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? Wow. My little children, that is not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Amen. Don't just say you love something, prove it.
can blame it on your husband. You can blame it on your wife. As the Jackson used to say, you can blame it on the sunshine. Yeah. You can blame it on the moonlight. You can blame it on the good time. Amen. Okay. Amen. You can blame it on the boogie man. Turn me off now, now that quote the Jackson 5 from the pulpit. No. They ain't listen to me no more. It's all right. I'm now. Amen. Oh, the preacher quote Michael Jackson. Uh, Woo! It's all right. Amen. Yeah. Not even saying anything. We must bless the person. Look, look back at Romans 12. Look at verse 14. Real fast. Real fast. Somebody say real fast. Hold the place in Romans 12. Okay, because we will come back. Look at verse 14. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Woo! Crickets. Yes, Lord. Bless them that persecute you. Bless them. Say, so what does that mean anyway, preacher? What does it mean to bless somebody? <laughs> what does it mean to bless somebody? It means to bless them. It means a blessing. Not just with your mouth, by the way. It's deeper than that. It's easy to bless somebody with your mouth. You know why? You know, brother, I love you, man. No matter what. You know, no matter what. You're right. Amen. Yeah, right. I love you, but I don't love what you're doing. Shall I park there? Yes, sir. Yes. 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 Put it in reverse. I love what you're doing, but I don't love you. That's a reverse. I don't want to put it in reverse. That's okay. I love you, but I don't love what you're doing. So because I don't love what you're doing, that's what a breach in our relationship. And then the Lord says, I love you, but I don't always love what you do. And because I don't always love what you do, that put a breach in our relationship. Because the way that you treat your brothers and sisters is the way that I want to be towards you. Hey, hey, hey. I know some of y'all don't believe that. But I'm looking back at a verse that says that if we don't, from our hearts, forgive. Come on, help me out. I know y'all know the verse. I know y'all know the verse. If I don't forgive my brother, what's going to happen between me and God? Go, come on, talk to me in the house of God. Come on, talk to me now. Because I
You don't even understand what you are dealing with. Because it's killing you. Bitterness does more harm to the vessel that is stored than it does on the vessel that is poured. Yes. Before I can pour bitterness on somebody else, I first have to deal with it inside of me. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why God heals us from the inside out. Come on now. Thank you. From the inside. Oh, oh we ain't done yet. Let me just keep going, amen. Let me just keep going. Listen. We, as we present our bodies in the sacrifice, we will truly understand that we do not belong to ourselves. And if we don't belong to ourselves, we have to let God be God. Amen. When my kids was younger, if an adult tried to jump on my son, I don't expect my son to be trying to fight no adult man. Right. Mm -mm. I expect my son to come and say, Dad, this grown man is down the street trying to fight me. And then, now his dad is going to take care of him. Because that's my son. Amen? Amen? And because that's my son. If my son have a problem, we have a problem. Amen? Amen? Amen. And hopefully as they get older, if I have a problem, we have a problem. Amen. That's what it's supposed to be. Amen? Amen? And so now understanding that, understanding that I'm not my own, if I have a problem, I have one that promised to take care of it. Amen. So I don't have to do it. I cannot allow bitterness and frustration and anger to become a part of who I am because it will kill me. I hear a lot of people dealing with depression. I heard a statement. It said depression is anger turned inward. just means that you are angry at something that happened and you will not verbalize it. And so you hold it. You hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Anger turned in. You say, I'm not going to ever hold it again. If the Bible says this, give place unto wrath. There is a place for it. And a lot of times when I get mad at something, the place for it is not the ears of man. We're going to come to that in a minute. If I get too ahead of myself. If I told you Romans 12, did I start reading yet? 12, 19, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. Yeah, there you go. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Where is the place for wrath? It's in the presence of the Lord. And in that place, it's not going to come to ask God to kill Brother Jaharis. Lord, destroy him, kill him, knock him down. Let him see your wrath. Let him, uh, let him know that he's wrong. No. People, listen. Don't ever try to sink the power of God on the people of God. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. The 
the way, you're only going to be able to do one or two things. You're going to be overcome with the evil that somebody has done to you, and you're going to get frustrated, bitter, mad, angry, and all that, or you're going to be able to overcome the evil with good. Mm -hmm. But you can't do both. Right. I'm going to speak my mind, and afterwards, I'm going to come and hug you. No. <laughs> sorry. <laughs>
that is not helping us. Amen. As your mind goes, so goes you. Whatever captures the mind captures the man. Show me what you think about, and I'll show you whether or not you're going to be able to live in peace or whether you're going to live in depression. And how do you tell somebody that you're depressed? It's hard to do, isn't it? Turn with me to Philippians chapter 4. I'm glad that we get to laugh and joke, but the truth is, this is really not a joking matter. I've seen so many people of God get destroyed because they hold stuff within. Amen. Yes, sir. We got a piano player in church, and there's no piano back there. Tango.